In this lesson, we're going to talk uh, about how to find things in the night sky, how we chart and record and uh, uh, describe where things are in the night sky. In order to do that, we need to talk a little bit about what we can call coordinate systems. There we are, shrink me up there. Uh, so coordinate systems are ways of locating things on a grid. And I'm sure you're used to coordinate systems from things like math class, where you have coordinates that you may use um, for plotting things on, uh, on, on a set of axes. So for example, the coordinates here might be uh, 3, 3. And the coordinates here might be uh, let's see, uh, 2, uh, minus 4. The fact that there's two numbers is what makes them coordinates. OK, uh, so anytime we've got two points and we can plot uh, something on a, on a two-dimensional grid, uh, that's what we call a coordinate system. You're also probably familiar with a coordinate system like this. Um, on the Earth, we have a coordinate system of latitude and longitude. So we have all these lines that go around the Earth, um, these lines of longitude that go north-south uh, and converge at the poles, uh, and then these lines of latitude which go around uh, the Earth and indicate how far north or south you are. Mapping things in the sky is much like mapping things on the Earth. We need a coordinate system. So if we have... Uh, just get the night sky here. I'm just going to make it a little darker. Um, so here's the night sky. And uh, there's a couple ways we could um, build a coordinate system. One way would be just to make all of the lines converge at the directly overhead. And then all of the, uh, the kind of the latitude lines. So all of those lines that go overhead would, would correspond to, to points around the compass. And all of these lines going up would just kind of go up in uh, equal numbers of degrees. The problem with having an Earth-based coordinate system like that is if, if we watch what happens, uh, the, the Earth is rotating, right? So let me just kind of speed this up a little bit. And as we do that, we see that the objects in the sky that we see move relative to the coordinate system. Uh, and, and that's not really terribly useful for long term. I mean, imagine uh, if our longitude, uh, latitude and longitude system was fixed and the Earth rotated underneath it. Um, and you say, well, what's your location? Well, my location depends on what time of day it is. Uh, and it would be the same for the sky. Now, it's, it's useful for figuring out where to, where to look, right? But it would be a moment-to-moment -moment thing and we'd have to... Uh, we'd have to calculate it on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. So instead what we do is we actually just extend the, the latitude and longitudes from the Earth outwards onto the sky. And that's called an equatorial system. Let me just... Uh, yeah, so as the daytime goes by. And now we can see that the grid is actually uh, moving with the sky. And so the objects on the grid uh, maintain their same coordinates, their same positions. So when we get to, let me just speed it up here to nighttime. So when we get to uh, nighttime, we can zoom in on an object, and the coordinates of that object remain the same from night to night, from from minute to minute, from hour to hour. So we can we can find the those objects. Okay, so the lines of uh, the coordinate lines on the sky don't have the same names. They're not called latitude and longitude. Um, they have kind of uh, funny names. Uh, the first one is called declination. Okay, so declination, let me just move, is like latitude. Okay, so the declination lines are these lines that uh, move upwards towards the poles. And 
the um, the way it works is that a zero degrees of declination is the part of the sky that's directly above the equator, and 90 degrees of declination is the part directly above uh, the North Pole, and minus 90 degrees of declination is directly above the South Pole. So if we come back to Stellarium here and we go towards, where's our pole? There's our pole. Um, and I don't know if you can see it in this graphic, but uh, this line here is uh, 60 degrees of declination and 70 degrees of declination and 80 degrees of declination and then the very pole itself would be uh, 90 degrees of declination. The equator uh, is, is right here so that's 0 degrees of declination and then going down minus 10, minus 20, minus 30 and so on. Uh, the other lines the lines that correspond to longitude are called right ascension. Okay, so right ascension or RA is like longitude. Uh, it's the angle around the celestial equator uh, running east, uh, east to west. Uh, sometimes it's measured in degrees, but usually it's measured in uh, hours and minutes and if we look at Stellarium again here if we zoom in uh, at any given point we can see that these um, uh, these lines of right ascension are marked off this is 12 hours 11 hours 10 hours uh, 9 hours and so on so they're marked off in hours and the reason they're marked off in hours is that uh, well, the Earth rotates once every 24 hours, and so there are 24 hours of right ascension that go around. They're almost like time zones, really, almost that correspond to, to the time zones on, on the Earth. So one hour of right ascension would be 1 24th of the full circle, so about 15, uh, 15 degrees, okay, so about 15 degrees kind of the reason it's called right ascension is if we're in the northern hemisphere which is where a lot of this stuff was defined we'll notice that things rise in the east right so where's where's my little east marker it's there it is somewhere okay so there's the east um and as it rises we'll notice that things are whoops run we'll notice that they are rising to the right. So they are ascending to the right, hence right ascension. So it's kind of an awkward way of referring to things, but so be it. Uh, one thing to note is that the right ascension seems to go in the wrong direction. Okay, If I come move back around to the south here, Okay, if we look at these lines of uh, right ascension, it's 14 hours, and then 15 hours, and then 16 hours, 17 hours. So the right ascension hours go up as we move from right to left, because what's happening is the sky is moving from left to right. And so anything that crosses kind of the, the, this invisible line that would be due south uh, at 14 hours of right ascension, one hour later it's going to be at 15 hours of right ascension one hour later it's going to be 16 hours of right ascension so it's it's acting basically like a like a big clock just as we have hours of right ascension just like time we have hours and minutes and seconds and the same is true uh, of right ascension so if we zoom in we can see that the hours of right ascension are then divided into minutes and even seconds of right ascension so that we can get the coordinates that are actually very, very, uh, very, very precise. Uh, the same is actually true of declination. Um, normally dec declination is measured in degrees, but if we zoom right in, we find that the degrees can also be broken down into uh, minutes and seconds. So we, at the detailed level, in terms of coordinates, we have for right ascension, that is moving from east to west across the sky, we have hours of right ascension and minutes and seconds, 
And in terms of declination, we have degrees that start zero at the horizon and go to 90 degrees uh, at the poles. But even smaller than the degrees, we have minutes and seconds uh, of declination. Now, since we're at about 44 degrees latitude, uh, that point, that celestial pole, if we turn around to the north here, we'll see that that north is Right, so all the lines converge there, and there's a there's a bright star there, or a moderately bright star there. It's called Polaris, or the North Star, and that sits very close to uh, to that celestial pole, that point in space directly above the North Pole. And we can see this uh, if we speed it up, and we can actually watch what happens as we speed it up. We can see that the sky rotates around that point. Of course, it's not really the sky that's rotating. The sky stays there, and the Earth rotates. So what we see is we're actually rotating under the sky. So it, it, it looks like the sky is rotating. Uh, one of the things we can do in Stellarium is, uh, let me advance to nighttime again. Um, we can find out details of various objects by clicking on them. Anytime we click on an object, uh, it gives us all kinds of information up here in the corner. And some of the information it gives, you'll notice, is right ascension and declination. You'll notice that there are actually two values for right ascension, uh, for R, R A and DE. Um, one says J2000, and the other says of date. And you'll notice they're very, very close, but they're off by, uh, you know, maybe a minute or two. The reason is uh, that the Earth's axis wobbles just a little bit over time, like a top. It takes about 33,000 years for it to do a complete cycle of wobble, so it's a very slow wobble. But it's enough that the position of the stars changes relative to the Earth a tiny bit each year. So we can standardize our, our coordinate system to a given year, like the year 2000. And so RADEJ2000 means uh, 2000 on the Julian calendar. Uh, RADE of date means exactly where it is today. For the purposes of what we'll be doing, it doesn't matter which one you use because they're so close that you'd really need to zoom right, right in, in order to tell the difference. And our paper charts uh, aren't that good. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking information on uh, some of these stars, so the, the coordinates, and plotting them on a paper star chart. And you'll see that there's two versions of the paper star chart. There's one that's just a flat rectangular grid, uh, and one that, that takes into account the fact that those uh, that those lines of uh, of RA come to a point at the pole, and we'll see. I think we're going to be looking at uh, this constellation here, Cepheus, and we'll see that Cepheus has this little kind of house shape. And when we plot it on a rectangular grid, it will come out looking very very different than it does if we plot it uh, on the grid that goes to a point. So that's what we'll be doing uh, in terms of uh, coordinate systems. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's what we'll be doing in class. Feel free to rewind and review the content of this. Um, have a look at the handout that goes along with this in the activity for class. And again, if you have any questions on what this all means, then please uh, jot them down and either email them to, uh, to me or Mr. Conrad uh, and uh, ask in class. So see you in class.